do a very nice job. I don't think there's one scene where Maddie sits and thinks about her problems or her situation. She's always on the move. She's always doing a thing, uh, which which I absolutely love. There's there's no scene that exists solely for exposition. And I've, I've seen you talk elsewhere that you, you try to avoid those. How do you avoid those? Because obviously at some point we got to get some exposition to know what's going on. What are your rules about exposition? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like working it into a scene um, and the scene has like an interesting setting, something is going on there. So it's not like I'm sitting at home alone quietly in bed thinking it's, you know, I'm at the basketball game or whatever it is. Um, and um, so so even if we have a line of, you know, I'm thinking about this, then we have the action of, you know, the basketball dribbled toward me or whatever. And so um, so it doesn't feel like, oh, it's just like three paragraphs of you uh ruminating um and putting some of it into conversation you know like it's always going to be better if you know if it's like okay let's review the facts of the case let's review the what clues we have available to us is always going to be better if it's two characters like talking about them and bouncing them back and forth than just one character sitting in bed and thinking about what it is that we know um so, and then also sometimes, like, you write the scene where the character, I always tell people, like, you don't need to have scenes where the character decides to do something, just have them do the thing. Um, so, you know, sometimes you need to write the scene where they decide, they consider their options, um, they talk about how they're getting to the thing that they're going to do, and then you just take all that out and you just, like, open up the scene on, like, there they are at the place that they were going to doing the thing they were going to do. The example I like to use is um, one of my favorite movies is called 10 Things I Hate About You. It was like a teen comedy from my adolescence. And um, there's this scene in it where the main love interest, uh, he serenades the girl who he's into with like this the full band of like their full high school band and they go like and he has a mic and he's singing to her and like ever you know she's out on the soccer pitch and his voice is coming through the loudspeakers and he and this like hundred person band are like you know marching in formation um and what's so great is that you never like logistically in reality that would be very complicated but you never actually see a moment where they are planning any of this and therefore you don't wonder about it there's not like a full scene of him being like like all right here's how i'm gonna get the mic and then figure out how the mic hooks up to like the wireless pa system so that she can hear me on the soccer pitch and like you know here's the song that i need to learn so that the band can, like that's all boring it's boring it doesn't matter it's just like you know just cut to like a friend saying to him like man you gotta make it up to her and then like cut to she's a soccer practice and he like comes out singing 